Jeff. I wondered what your sweet spot is and what kinds of business you like to invest. Sure. So Flybridge Capital is an early stage investor. We invest in seed and Series A companies, typically pre-revenue, uh, often university spinouts or uh, companies that have a prototype or even just a good idea and 10 fabulous PowerPoint slides. And our typical check size is uh, as low as 250000 um, uh, and as high as 6 to $7 million. Great. What percentage of women startups do you get pitches for and what percentage have you funded? I don't know if I can say precisely, but it's not enough. I can say that precisely. <laughs> well, that's um, a positive comment. <laughs> on, both, on both dimensions. Yeah. Let's see, I would say probably 5 to 10%. Okay. And we've probably funded 10%. Uh, we probably have funded four or five women entrepreneurs out of our roughly 50 portfolio companies. Great. I can give have you a you few know? examples. If that's oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I highlight one of them in my book, uh, Marsha Moses, who is a professor at Massachusetts Children's Hospital, a cancer researcher, who developed an incredible diagnostic uh, capability to do uh, cancer biomarkers through urine samples. So if you pee in a cup, she will tell you what kind of cancer you have if you have cancer. Wow. Uh, which is an extraordinary uh, preventative and low-cost diagnostic method for cancer detection. Yeah, so really, really, really making a difference, hey? Really breakthrough. Um, mm. Marsha has been working on this for 20 years and uh, we spun the technology out of Children's Hospital and, and with her leadership uh, built a company called Predictive Biosciences that's uh, in the market today with the, with the product. Wow. wow. Have you noticed differences with women entrepreneurs in how they play pitch and build businesses? I would say that in general, women entrepreneurs tend to be more team-oriented, less egotistical. Um... And I would say that they have a low ego and therefore more willing to be open to bringing in new leadership at the right time. Right. The positive qualities. Yeah. I've, I've read your blog for a few years and appreciated your article, The VC Gender Gap. A yeah. VC sexist. <laughs> I quote you, as the, fa as the father of a capable, ambitious daughter, perhaps I'm oversensitive to the issue, but since becoming a VC seven years ago, I find it amazing that only 5 to 10% of the VC industry is made up of women. Only 25% of all VC partnerships have a single woman partner, and only 7 to 8% have more than one woman partner. Anecdotally, even fewer women are management company GPs as opposed to employee GPs. In other words, true owners of VC funds as opposed to deal partners. What other major industry remains 90 to 95 percent male dominated? What's the deal? There's some good stats there, Jeff, and I quote you again, I guess when you have a clubby, tightly woven, self-perpetuating network, it's hard for women to break in. It's a stubborn phenomena, but I hope we can figure out how to correct it. Otherwise, our industry is tragically losing out on 50 percent of the world's best talent. This was a big conversation in 2010, and obviously you are ahead of the game as this was posted in October 2009. In 2011, do you have any ideas or perceptions about how we can change the ratio? Well, it's a really thorny problem, um, and it's one that I would unfortunately say I don't see a huge pipeline of young associates and principles coming through that suggest we're going to radically change this phenomenon. And that's really what you need. Yes. You need uh, more MBA and entrepreneur and scientific uh, executives who are women uh, because those yes. are the feeders for venture capital. Then you need more women associates and principals and then you need more partners and then more management partners. Mm. Um, you know, we, 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 I wish to, I could say that we are a, a, a model here. Unfortunately, we're not. I will confess to you that my partnership, and we have five partners, and all five of us are men. Uh, mm. We have hired in our history, I think, six non partner investment professionals, and three of them, uh, no, four of them, four out of six, 
uh, have been women. So I think we're doing a good job with the next generation. Um, but it's tricky. It's very tricky. Yeah. Uh, Cindy Gallup, a founder of If We Ran the World, said in a recent interview, VCs fund in their own image white male. The cycle is self-perpetuating, so predominantly male VCs have a preconceived notion in their heads of what they think constitutes the kind of entrepreneur to back. John Durr apparently said if you're white, under 30, tech geek with no social life and a Harvard-Stanford dropout lineup for VC money, he didn't say male, but he might as well have. If it had been a 17-year-old Russian girl who came up with chat roulette, would there have been as much interest in funding whatever she might do next? What's your take on this, Jeff? And is this hap if this is happening, how can women startups find an opening in this culture? I'm not sure that today women startups aren't actually advantaged, frankly. Oh, okay. Because I think they stand out. Okay. And I think there's a lean forward on the part of many VCs who want to affect change to be more helpful, to give a, on the margin more time uh, to women entrepreneurs. And I think the a small proportion of VCs who are women are leaning forward, trying to be more helpful, be good mentors to women entrepreneurs. So I think in many ways, um, there are opportunities now for women entrepreneurs that may not have been available 10 or 20 years ago where they can, okay. where they can find champions more readily. Okay. So that's a really positive thing then. Um, there are opportunities there for the women that are yeah. going to I mean, take that risk. I'll give you an example. I have a woman entrepreneur in my portfolio who is able to garner mentors and advisors and attract people to help her in a way that I've never seen anyone else achieve. And I think one of her wow. assets is the fact that she is a compelling person, a compelling visionary entrepreneur, but she's also very likable and people want her to succeed because they want a woman entrepreneur to succeed. Wow, I got shivers. That's so great. And it's really positive feedback. Thank you. Cindy also says, I think not as many women as men actively seek VC money because they're not as tapped into the boys' network as male entrepreneurs are. Young male entrepreneurs can very easily become the flavour of the month and get introduced around from one VC to another, get the perception going that they're hot and get their funding. It doesn't happen for women that way. Do you think that networking with venture capitalists is harder for women entrepreneurs? I'm not sure I, I subscribe to that belief either. I think okay. in what I've seen both in my work as a venture capitalist here in, on the East Coast in Boston and in New York City, and uh, I teach part-time at Harvard Business School, I have observed mm. that, again, because they are in the minority, women can many times be even more effective in network and be more effective. Uh. But it takes a certain personality. Uh, you, yes. You, know, you have to be aggressive. There are attributes that cut across genders. You have to be aggressive, okay. compelling, credible, knowledgeable, authoritative, passionate. Um, and if you have those qualities as a woman entrepreneur, I think you can do a terrific job. And look, we've seen a lot of wonderfully successful women entrepreneurs lately, whether it's Gail Goodman, the CEO of Constant Contact, which was a mm. very successful 2007 IPO and now a, a leader in the email marketing uh, market, whether it was Alexis Maybank, who was a young Harvard Business School graduate who was the co-founder with her partner Alexandra of Guilt Group. Um, yes. You know, you're seeing a lot of really talented women entrepreneurs stand out, uh, but they have to have those attributes. Right. Thanks for that. And uh, we need to build those attributes up. <laughs> yes. And, and what? more role models. You know, they need yes. mentors and role models. 